Welcome back. In this video, we're going to walk through the configuration of FQDN objects and put them into action on our access control policy. This is a relatively new feature as of Firepower 6.3, so it's going to be kind of fun to walk through this configuration. The way that this works is that we're going to first define a DNS server or a group of DNS servers that the FTD device will use. When we use an FQDN object in our access control policy, it'll resolve all the associated IP addresses to those FQDNs and perform whatever action we specify in the access control policy. We're going to first define the DNS server that the FTD device will use. So we'll navigate to devices and then platform settings and edit the platform settings. We're going to choose DNS on the left hand side and check the box next to enable DNS name resolution. If we haven't already defined a DNS server group, we'll go ahead and check the plus and configure it here. In this case, I'm just going to name it security demo DNS. My default domain is securitydemo.net. I'll change the retries to three and define the one DNS server in my environment. I'm going to choose the inside interface since that's the interface that's actually pointed towards a DNS server. Oh, let me go ahead and choose that DNS server group we just created and click Save. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this lab with you really quickly. I have two different hosts in my lab. I have the server 2003 server and it's using a proxy. So that proxy is beyond the firewall and I can't really change that. So as you can see here, it's actually proxy.esl.cisco.com. And I'm able to access the internet without an issue. I have another host, which is just a domain join PC. It's using the same proxy. And the IP address for this is 10.1.100.103. And it looks like the host name is corp. Dash pc2. Dot dash win7. Dot security demo. Dot net. If we go to our Windows server again, we should be able to see it registered to DNS. Yep, right there with the correct IP address. So with this policy that I'm about to create, I'm going to go ahead and allow everything else to access the proxy server, but just block the destination of that actual PC to the proxy using nothing but host names. So let me go ahead and edit my existing access control policy under policies, access control. And I'm going to choose add rule. I'll just name this block proxy for the corporate PC. And for the zones, I'm going to do source zone inside, destination outside. And I haven't created any objects yet, so I'm going to create one now. This is going to be an FQDN object, so I'll have to move the radio button over to FQDN on the, left, on the right side there. And I'll just name this Corp Win PC2 or Corp PC2 Win and fill in the fully qualified domain name for it. It's just an IPv4 address, so I'll just put that there. Save. Then I'm going to create another object for the proxy. And this proxy actually will resolve to both IPv4 and IPv6, so I'll just go ahead and notate that there. So the corporate PC is actually going to be my source network and the destination will be the proxy. I'm going to change this to block with reset and log at the beginning of the connection. I'll click add and let me go ahead and move this rule to the top 
or else it will never get hit. So I'll just drag and drop that to, oop. I'll just drag that to the very top and save and deploy this policy. So it should take about a minute or so for this to deploy. So I'll just go ahead and speed up this video. Now that that's finished deploying, let's go ahead and swing over to our FTD command line. We're going to just take a look at a couple show commands so we can see the configuration and some other details. So let's do a show running config object and we see our two objects created for FQDN objects, Corp PC2 Win7 and Cisco Proxy. Show DNS and we can see the uh, what D the DNS resolved for for both Corp PC2 Win7 and pro the proxy. Then we can see our DNS configuration for that FTD device that was pushed through the platform settings. Show FQDN, which again will show us the FQDN object information that was resolved via DNS. And if I do a show access list, I should see that access list listed here for the firepower rules. Yeah, if you, as you can see here, let me just highlight this really quickly. And as you can see, Firepower populated the IP addresses that it resolved to resolve that information to and added lines in the command line. So let's go ahead and test this out to make sure it's just blocking for my core PC, but not my, my server. So back on my server, let's go ahead and just go to a random page. Looks like it works just fine. I'll try going to cisco.com. Yep, resolves just fine on the server. This isn't the one being blocked, so it shouldn't be an issue. And as you can see, it's configured to go to that proxy that we're blocking for the other device or the other computer. And as you can see under analysis connections events, um, everything was allowed going outbound from that server to the proxy. We're going to just change this to sliding window just because it's easier to look at. Now let's go to the corporate PC and try to access the internet or the proxy. So I'm going to go ahead and flush my DNS and try to go to a new page. And it should die pretty quickly because it's blocked with reset. And I'll resume the logs really quickly for the connection events, and I should see a bunch of blocks. Yep, block with reset. It's hitting that rule. And with that, that's the configuration of FQDN ACLs. Thank you for joining me, and I appreciate it.